<laughs> so I'm Jayana, aka JJ, and I'm 13. My name is Antoine Patton, and I'm one of the founders of Photo Patch Foundation. Photo Patch is a, a nonprofit organization. We work with kids who have a mom or dad in prison, and we're bent on ending the cycle of intergenerational incarceration. So uh, we do that through three different programs we have. Uh, one is an app that allows kids to communicate with their parents, which we'll talk more about. And um, we also have a program called Life Lessons, where we bring specialized teachers and speakers to speak with our youth. And then we have pop-up program, where we take the kids to different places and do fun events, uh, photograph the whole event, and then allow the kids to send those photos directly to their mom or dad who's in prison. So I created the app when I was 12, like uh, a year ago and it took me like two to three months. But um, I created on this thing called Build Fire and like some coding was involved as well. But um, it just was really cool to like be able to go through the experience. Like it was really cool to like actually do it and like be a part of it because like, oh, I always see him do stuff like this and I was like, maybe I should try it. And it was actually really cool like going through the process of building it and making it and see like your work is like coming to something that's good and it actually looks good. Like I was surprised that it actually looked like something official. I was like, oh, it's cool. <laughs> so you can get it in the Apple Store or the Google Play Store as well. So it's for the, the two major platforms. Uh, so the app is a more convenient way for the children to use photo patch because I mean you can use a website, but I just know like more children and more people are using phones now instead of like laptops and computers. So I just figured like, it would be more convenient for them to use our platform. So like on like a phone or like an app, it would be much easier because people daily use their phones or have wherever they go. So like wherever you are, you can be able to send letters or photos instead of having to carry like a computer or be on a computer. Yeah, it's pretty straightforward. So you download the app and you, you go through this process of creating your account. When you create your account, the main pieces of information you need are the address for where you want to send your photos and your letters to. So that would be whoever this incarcerated loved one is. Mm -hmm. So the jail name, the um, address, the zip code, for example, and then also the return address, just in case something goes wrong at the prison and they need to send it back. We need to know where should that letter be sent back to. Okay. So um, when people use the app and they set up their accounts, they only have to set up the addresses one time and after that it's a very simple uh, process going forward. You just log in, upload your photos and your letter, and you're good to go. So uh, we wanted to make the process as simple and efficient as possible for the end user, but on our side, we still do a lot of the grunt work. So after they upload the photos and type the letter, we print it out, we package it, and ship it off for them using postal mail still. We know how important communication is, so we just want to make that process as uh, approachable as possible and remove any deterrence. So from our experience, we know firsthand how important communication is. So um, I did a lot of time in prison myself, and I look at my friends who also did time in prison, and they didn't have as much communication with their children as I had with my daughter. So while I was incarcerated, she would send me letters, I say, every other month. I wanted it more often because how empowering it was, how happy it made me to see how she felt about me and the things she was keeping me um, up to date about. So I always wanted more communication and just, just stay in tune with everything she was doing. And um, I'll see my friends who didn't really get any communication from their loved ones, from their, from their kids. And now the difference between our relationships, the, how close JJ and I are compared to my friends and their daughters, they're still trying to catch up with each other. Right. Whereas her and I, is like we clicked instantly, we were already clicking, it was like we didn't miss a beat kind of thing. And the older the child gets, the harder it is to build a relationship. It's like you're not really there with them anymore, so they don't feel like they will be able to have a more close relationship. Right, right. So that open, honest, transparent communication as soon as possible is, is pretty important. That's what we believe. Um, and like it, it, it helps. Like I said, her words encourage me to want to wanna be better as a person. So we believe like healthy communication in any relationship is, is key. It's like it's really the key. So um, imagine a kid sending letters and a photo to their parent in prison and the positive messages that come with that. Now that parent is less likely to recidivate because they're keeping on their mind like, I can't come back to prison. This, this kid is like going out of their way to send me letters and photos. It's telling me they miss me and they want me here. 
I got to do the right thing. So we're, we're trying to impact the child, give them a chance to vent and get things off of their chest, and also the parent, um, keep them up in, in the loop with their child, but also let them think like, hey, I need to make better decisions. The latest statistic is like over two and a half million kids have a parent okay. in prison. Wow. So it's kind of crazy, and that's not counting people who go to county jails every single day. So with our app, they can use it, whether they're in county jail, or state jail, or federal jail, they can still use our application to, to communicate instantly for free. Um, so some of the things we want to do is, we started off as just like this tech company who just had like this service that allows people to communicate. But uh, the more we go out and we get into the community and, and talk to the kids and even parents, we see like we need more of a hands-on approach. So that's where the Life Lessons program come to play, Life Standing for Love, Intellect, and Financial Education, where we want to pour more resources into these youth, more um, opportunities, share those with the youth. So I think that's going to be the goal is as we start spreading. We have branches here um, in Florida, as well as in Los Angeles and New York as well. But we want to spread. We want to get to more, uh, <clears throat> more of these popular cities where incarceration is a, is a big problem and have more of a, a hands-on presence. So, which means like we, we need to get into space as well. We need like a physical space where these kids feel like, hey, I have somewhere I can go to. When my parent goes to prison, I know where I can go. Right now, it's, it's, that's not like very um, accessible for them. They don't know where to go to and instead they bottle it all up and it stays inside. So they need to know that it's somewhere they can go um, to speak, to vent, and get some help. Yeah, once they find out, <laughs> it'll be amazing because like then, they know like they have something to go to, like he said, so. Mm -hmm. As long as we keep pushing it, it'll get bigger and bigger and help more people. The kids aren't walking around with like a badge that says, hey, I have a mom or dad <laughs> And nobody's bragging about it, right? Yeah. So we have to figure out how do we find, um, find a kid so that we can help out. And I, I think the most strategic thing we've done so far and what's really been helpful is partner, partnerships, like partnering with other nonprofits and community leaders getting our um, services out there, marketing, and letting people know what we do. Mm -hmm. And then that way, if we partner, they work with at-risk youth as well. Mm -hmm. And a certain percentage of those at-risk youth have a mom or dad in prison. So, um, and that's just always hard still. They, of course, have to protect this child, so they don't want to just give the information up immediately. They need to make sure that what we're doing is, is genuine and we're really here to help. So it's, it's just finding the kids, getting the word out there. Um, we're doing all kinds of stuff, creative things to try to let people know about Photo Patch from um, social media posts to music videos to performances. We're trying our best just to let people know like the service is really here. Right. It's just, it's really fun. Like I just never thought like we'd be doing something like this, but like, it's fun to like do this. So we're definitely working on different things and like we just hope like other people, cause we have a lot of people that's listening to us so far. Like the point that it got to like money, the many of people that listen and watch the video like over the past like few weeks is like really crazy. So the feedback that we got is really crazy. So we definitely try to work on more to get it out there. So we went into the studio, uh, what was it called? Vibe Recording Studio. Vibe Recording Studio. And uh, it only took us a couple of tries to like get it. And like we were, it was so like really, it was like really, really fun. Like we got the, like it was this building and then like Inside of it was like you have to go into like this little booth that you go into and like you put on the headphones and like you can see like on the screen of like the tracks. The, yeah, it's, the it was really cool and like they can hear you outside so like they give you feedback and like tell you maybe you can do this differently or maybe that. So it was really fun to like experience something like that. Like it was really, really fun. I think I had the concept initially like we talked about this for years like Photo Patch needs a theme song. We need to figure out a theme song. We've always and uh, once we heard the beat, it was just like automatic kind of thing. And uh, so Michael starts the song off and he talks about his pop is in prison doing five years. And like that's a real thing, his dad really did five years in prison. Unfortunately, his dad is back in prison. So when he's, when he's on stage and he's performing his song and he's in the studio recording the song, you can, you can feel the passion coming from him. Like he really takes it serious. So um, like the lyrics in the song, I hope everyone's listening to them. It's, it's more than catchy, like this is their it's life. It's like true. Yeah, it's like, it's like yeah. really uh, true stuff. So um, it's pretty cool like that they're using music as an outlet to vent and, and make them happy. It's like the song isn't a depressing song. It's like it's catchy, but like it also has a story behind it, like mm -hmm. something like empowering and inspiring. All right.
So yeah, I just I just put the kids in the position and they they dunk it, they slam dunk it. <laughs> it was nothing like pass up, like no, we're not gonna record a song. Or what? Like I was like, yeah, let's do this. They added dances to it. Yeah, it was uh, definitely really fun. The choreography. The, the, um, they even had like hands-on help with video direction. So as we were shooting a video and coming up with the storyline, they had ideas and those were implemented. Even some stuff that was put like a blooper actually made into the real video. Like Michael not listening to the video, <laughs> running around, we're like, hey, stay focused. And it ended up being in the video because it was so genuine, it was really him. So um, yeah, it's, it's all fun, like she said. Pop-ups are, um, they're supposed to be fun events. They're supposed to be for something to, for the kids to take their mind totally off of whatever's going on in their community or at home and more so expose them to something new, something different. So we may hold this event at some center or something like that, or we take the kids on a physical field trip. And uh, the, the whole thing is just like it's something different for them, something new. And we want to take a bunch of pictures and allow the kids to send those pictures immediately to their parents. So it may be a baseball game, it may be something that we create internally, um, it may be a museum trip so we're working on. Uh, we're going to be doing a coding pop-up soon where we take the kids and yeah. teach them how to code with robots and stuff like that. So it's gonna be cool for them to send pictures of them building robotics to their parents in prison. It's, I That's think, gonna be yeah, awesome. Right, yeah. right. I can't wait. <laughs> wow. We're, we're working on building a youth committee right now of teenagers because like that's who really is close to the problem and they, they'll have the best ideas. So we're really trying to tap more into like what the kids wanna do and then like bring that to life. What's funny, because the other day we did um, we went to Dunbar Community High School and I asked the kids like, hey, where did I learn how to code? After telling them everything I know about code and, and exposing them to like how big this industry is and the potential. And like kids were like, oh, you learned how to code in college. Some people said the garage. Some people said, you just read from a book. <laughs> and uh, when I told them I learned how to code in prison, they just were like, really? I'm like what? I never would have guessed. <laughs> the room got quiet. Was like, yeah, the room got really quiet. <laughs> so back in 2008, which is about 10 years ago, um, I was, sent to prison for eight years and I had possession of a weapon, I had a gun I shouldn't have had. So that bad decision led to me spending the next eight years of my life in prison. So um, I was actually just like, just getting into fatherhood. JJ had just turned three years old. I had just turned 20 years old. So um, you can just imagine how confused I was, like where my life was headed. Um, but I was more optimistic than anything went to prison in New York State, um, very tough prisons, but um, somehow survived it all and came out a way better person. So I was lucky enough to end up in a college program by the name of Bar College, and they have a, a program called BPI, which stands for Bar Prison Initiative. And Bar Prison Initiative is, uh, they use their own money, their own resources to bring teachers in and give us a college education, a fully accredited college education. So. Um, I, I was able to earn an associate's degree, a few of my friends, they earned bachelor's degrees, and a um, powerful program. So at one point they brought in a, a web development course to learn how to build websites. And when I seen it, I was like, it's not for me. And then someone else said something too, like, uh, this stuff is hard, oh my God, I'm trying it, but it's, it's, it's hard. And I was like, I won't touch it, <laughs> it's not for me. I'll stick with, I think at the time I was doing screenwriting. Um, what else was I really into? Music, I've always had a passion for music. But um, I don't know, I guess I would say I was still kind of confused in my direction where I wanted to go. So I didn't pick that up, but then one day I was reading the USA Today and it was talking about apps. So it was 2010, the first iPhone had just came out in 2008. So apps weren't really a huge thing yet. Like the phrase, there's an app for that, probably wasn't even existing yet. <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, so reading about it, I'm like, this is cool, an app, and all these different ideas, examples I'm reading about, I was like, this is, this is nice, like, I think I can build an app, I think I can, or at least I think I can come up with a concept for an app, that's what I thought. Mm -hmm. So as I started thinking of more concepts, I got more excited about learning it, because I'm like, I'm going to be here for at least another four or five years. Concepts aren't going to be enough. I have access to a computer lab, thanks to this college program and also even to books because of this college program, so maybe I should take advantage of it, give it a shot. So I don't know what it was, um, maybe I was meditating a lot more in those days, <laughs> and maybe the meditation just made me feel more confident about it, because literally like I left the cell and I went and picked up a book, I found a book, luckily it was one left, and I started teaching myself because it was too late to enroll into that, to that class, it had already started. Mm -hmm. 
So I started teaching myself going back to the cell late at night, staying up to three or four o'clock in the morning, reading through this book, not knowing what's going on. Like, I don't know what, <laughs> but I'm like, I don't know how I'm just determined enough to stick through with it. And it was just all like a whole new language. And um, I was dreaming about it after a while. It was kind of weird. <laughs> so, um, but I just stuck with it. Thank God I stuck with it. And after a while, I was able to like build basic web pages. And um, it's the cool thing about coding is like the more you learn about it, the more you put it into your head, the more ideas start coming. So I had maybe like 10 or 15 ideas within the first couple of weeks. Like, I'm going to make a bunch of apps. I'm going to make a bunch of apps. I'll make a bunch of money. But mind you, I'm only learning how to build websites. I still don't know how to build an app. Right. Like, at least I'm getting into coding, but it's a whole different ball field. Really? So, yeah. So lucky for me, um, I heard about this guy named Julian, uh, older guy, <clears throat> maybe early 40s, um, Jamaican descent. And he was like a genius in, 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 in this prison that I was in. Everybody looked up to him from a lot of different things, like mathematics. And he was, he was into chemistry. And come to find out, he was also into computer programming. So I wasn't talking to him at the moment, but I made up my mind to become friends with him so that way I can kind of like tap into his brain. So um, I went running for him one day, running with him one day in, the, in like the gym. Like, I was like, hey, can I jog with you? I want to pick your brain. He's like, yeah, sure, no problem. So we went running and I told him what I wanted to do. I want to really get into some hardcore programming. And he was like, no problem. Like instantly he just was like, whatever, whatever you want to do, let's do it. So also lucky for me, like we were in the same dorm area, like our sales were near each other. So literally every night uh, we had like an extra two hours to sit down in the day room and what like some people watch TV, some people cook. Him and I would sit there and like handwrite code. He would like teach me certain wow. things like how to code. So he got me deeper into the knowledge. So then the next day I would go down to practice it. Of course I hit a roadblock, but I bring it back to him and he'll help me get back through it again. So um, amazing experience, amazing teacher, and I think. Uh, it just was like the time was right. Like I really, really wanted it. I had a teacher who really wanted to teach and I had the computers there just wide open. No internet, no internet, but <laughs> luckily the college program would bring in certain programs that we needed, certain libraries and tools. And um, I just kept on really, really trying to polish it up. And that's the reason why I never got a bachelor's degree is because I turned down a bachelor's program twice because I wanted to continue computer programming. They didn't have computer programming bachelor degrees. You had to get in like history or uh, philosophy or something like that. I'm like, I see the future. <laughs> I see the future. It's in this technology, so I want to do this more. So and that kind of led to Photo Patch. Like, if it wasn't for that, Photo Patch probably wouldn't exist. Cause I started seeing, I'm thinking like a hacker now, and I'm like, how do I get more letters from my daughter? How do I help her um, communicate more often with me? What would I do if I had these skills now in the streets? And I uh, started thinking like, what if there was a website where somebody could upload photos and type a letter, send it to us. Now, of course, we can't send that straight to the jail because there's not smartphones in jail, there's not internet in a lot of jails. So we need a way to still get the letters to the parent. And um, of course, snail mail still exists. So if we can just mask the front end of the process, make it seem like it's like easy as uploading to Facebook or something like that, uh, we'll still do the hard stuff on the back end and um, it worked out. It's, it's crazy. We're glad like this whole nonprofit thing is possible, and we don't have to charge the kids for it. The community supports us. We're able to raise money and, and pay for letters and stamps and stuff like that. And it was so crazy because like at a point like we were literally getting mail from people using the app and website, and we were literally like packing it and putting it in envelopes. <laughs> it was so crazy. It's crazy. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Like ever since she built the app and we made it live and we told people about it, it's like the numbers have skyrocketed. Yeah. So like every day we see at least five new signups and that's a lot for us because before it was like we had to go to an organization, partner with them mm -hmm. and then all at once they upload like 30 accounts or they create like 30 accounts or 50 accounts depending on how many kids they have the organization. Mm -hmm. Now it's just like from Instagram and Facebook or um, through press release or so whatever, wherever they're hearing about this at people are just like, oh, photo patch, oh, this is cool. They just go and sign up and download the app. Mm -hmm. So every day people are signing up and um, uh, eventually it's, we're gonna need more money. <laughs> we're gonna need to raise more money seriously just to continue paying for all of the snail mail we're sending out. Right. But uh, yeah, we, we've sent out thousands and thousands of letters, I would say, and probably on a consistent basis, at least a few hundred families a month are using our service. Wow. So that's the main thing too. We wanna. Uh, just get better at reminding people to use the app. Mm -hmm. Like Father's Day just passed, so we did a Father's Day campaign mm -hmm. with our partners out of LA, uh, Pops Club and Place for Grace. 
So us three, our three organizations came together and did a campaign where we allow kids to send Father's Day postcards out. So we sent a notification out, JJ did it through the app. It was like, hey, um, send a postcard out, and it works out. Or a uh, notification you did as well was, hey, go check out the photo patch video. So we just, want, we just want to stay on top of their minds more often, just like any other company, any other tech company. Just need to remind people like, hey, this service is here, use it. If I can say anything to the parents in prison, mm -hmm. any I words of wisdom, any? I'll you probably say just like, stay strong. Like, don't think about it too much. Like, don't think about the negative things that come with being in prison. Like, just think about the future, thinking about what you can do, like, when you get out, what you can do with your child or stuff like that. Because the more negative you think, that's when, like, everything falls apart and then you feel like you can't do anything. So I would just say, like, stay positive, stay thinking optimistic and positive. Think about the brighter side, think about the future, what you can be doing, like do things to get ready for the future, basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. you have a lot of potential, that's what I would say too, like the sky's the limit. I never thought I would be coding, I never thought I would be making beats, I never thought I would be um, getting into virtual reality, yeah. um, writing, a, wrote a book, like it's so many different things that I, I didn't give myself credit for that I could do. Mm -hmm. And once I tapped in and said I can, I did. So yeah. I think that's one thing that needs to, even though they're in a dark place right now, they just need to, to, uh, to like she said, be more right. optimistic. And don't just, underestimate don't yourself. Don't underestimate yourself for sure. And get back to those kids, do the right thing. But by the time we release this, this should be, the book should be live. Okay, so when is the book gonna be live? Let's make the two weeks. Two weeks? Two weeks. <laughs> We're definitely putting that face. <laughs> <laughs> Two weeks. Two weeks. What is, so what's the book about? Um, the book is, is called From Cages to Stages, How STEM Changed My Life. And pretty much I um, just track my journey from in prison to post-prison and how STEM changed my life. And I go over different examples of how science changed my life, how technology changed my life, engineering and mathematics as well. And just giving different examples, I talk about my mentors in the book. I talk about more in depth about how I ended up in prison and like the real backstory um, over my, my journey being a father in prison and how that affected our relationship. Uh, just really like I guess painting a picture, showing people how you can go from a cage and a cage being something physical or something more mental, and thinking how you can't do something or you thinking that this is the road I'm going to be going to take for the rest of my life, whatever it may be, whatever that tunnel vision is, how to break out of that cage, how I broke out of that cage, and then I give like seven principles that were really important to me, um, and how that could probably help the reader as well. I'm a co-founder of Atlas Digital Group, also the CTO, mm -hmm. and um, it's crazy, like learning how to code in prison has led to us being able to build websites and apps for other people. We, we do our own, we have our own product, but uh, companies come to us as well, entrepreneurs come to us as well, and want their dreams to become more tangible, so we build those things out as well. So that's been a crazy experience too. Definitely. And then of course, it's also led to um, JJ getting some cool experiences, and she's only been coding for like, on and off for like two or three years, so yeah. it's kind of crazy. So I know once she like, she like dedicates some heavy time to it, she'll, um, she'll go far. She got like offered to be an intern at this big uh, company out in LA. What? <laughs> yeah, um, Headspace. So, First we went to the uh, this hackathon at um, in LA, and we had to like come up with a solution <laughs> to a problem of like incarceration. Like, um, what is it like? Reentry. Re how to facilitate someone reentering society okay. from prison. Yeah. So basically, like, have a solution of something that can help them when they come from prison. So uh, it was it was really cool experience. And then after that, we got to go to a place called Headspace, which is. Um, a company where they have like this app where like you can use it to like meditate it's really cool and we went to their office and oh my god it was so like it was really really nice there and um this girl Jessica she gave us a tour but before she gave us a tour she mentioned to like all her co-workers and stuff that like we were coming so like walking through the whole building everybody's like you're the girl who put the app you're changing so everybody <laughs> know me I felt like Beyonce I was like oh my god it was really really cool and they were like you can work here I was like actually think I might take up the offer. Like it was really <laughs> cool to be there and like in the environment. It was like 
everybody was like so friendly and like it definitely was like it was amazing to be chill. there. Yeah. And couches everywhere. Yeah. It was nice. and, and that was our like second time that day seeing the office like really chill and stuff. We went to um, another office before that called ARC. ARC, uh, Anti Recidivism Coalition. And we got a tour there and we got to see the founder. I mean, the. He's the executive the director. The exit, uh, Shaka Singor. And it was really cool to meet him. He kind of like told us how he went to prison before too, and like how um, what he's been doing has led to many opportunities. Like he's he has a lot of going. He got to do a meeting with Oprah, and like he definitely had a lot of big things in his life. So we got to meet him. It was really cool. He said that he would be my mentor, and he gave me his book to read. He wrote a book, so he gave me his book to read, and he said like. Um, he would help us get photo patch out there, and like if if I would, wanted for him to be my mentor, he'd be my mentor. I was like, wow. that was, it was really really cool I'll take that. to I'll take that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> have that experience. It was really amazing. Yeah, it's Definitely. Cool. Yeah, so the the sky's the limit when it comes to this comes to this stuff. Um, it's pretty cool, and we just want to give it back too. So hope, we're hoping to do more coding pop ups because it's a skill that isn't. Like mandatory right now, but we believe that it's going to be eventually. It's going to be like another vocational, mm -hmm. and um, kind of like a music or something like that. And they're going to be teaching in the schools, so we just want to try to get like the at-risk youth ahead of the curve. Definitely. Cool. If you want to get involved, uh, there's a couple ways to do it. So you can volunteer your time and energy, or you can donate uh, financially and support us. Uh, some people have done both. Whatever you would like to do to get involved, it's like always appreciated. There's so many kids we have to reach, like we said, more than yeah. two million. So we're just trying to spread as quick as possible. There's yeah. other services out there that allow youth or people in general to communicate with their loved ones, but uh, they're all paid services, so you have to pay for it. We want to spread this free service as far as possible. We want to get it out there and let these kids know like it's easy to communicate and there shouldn't be anything blocking you. You have the right to communicate with your parent uh, when you want and it should be free. So uh, we're really trying to get that out there. So if people want to help out, literally it costs us about um, two to four dollars depending on how many photos uh, the child wants to send out. So a two dollar donation goes a long way. So we uh, have people now signing up to be recurring sponsors, mm -hmm. meaning you can, on a monthly basis, donate the same amount of money. So it could be $1 a month, which is super simple, or it could be $20 a month, whatever is really like in your budget, but um, it goes a long way, just, just know that. Definitely. And you can learn more at photopatch.org or download the Photopatch app from the Play Store or the App Store. <laughs> <laughs>